Hey guys, Red195 today with another video. I hope you enjoy this one. I'm here with uh, Tim, who's a friend of mine from Baggy Uni. He just finished his Masters on Rattlesnake Sussery. But uh, here in Baggy, he's got a pretty cool collection. Uh, some more unusual stuff and obviously stuff we have not experienced on this channel before. So um, stay tuned, we'll get looking. So as I was saying before, he's got a pretty decent collection. Like, if you just have a quick look around, we're going to go through everything uh, like with a quick look and get a bit more about each species. But um, how about we start here, Tim? So what are these guys? So these are mountain horn dragons, um, Acanthosaurus capra. They're the the most common, if you like, species of mountain horn dragon in the hobby. Um, but they're not regularly captured bred, really, especially in the UK. Um, but these babies are about six weeks oldish. Um, they're from Southeast Asia, and they're sort of they're primarily insectivorous and like a truly arboreal species. They only really come to the ground to to feed or to lay eggs. Yeah, so they're they're pretty cool. We'll be seeing uh, the adults in a bit, but they're really cool. I think like it's just uh, done very well to get like 18 it was in one clutch and for all of them to successfully hatch that is uh remarkable actually uh, mm. i would say so over here we've got um was it you got three male um they, they are adults right yeah, yeah. these are uh, rhino horn lizards they're um a sri lankan agamid species they're sort of small um but quite colorful they they're sort of called the rhino horn lizard for the yeah, the rhino reasons. horn, if you like, on the head. Um, like the males are nice and colourful. Yeah, you can sort of see better colour there. A nice, nice green pattern. Yeah, and I mean the, that one's got a really good horn. The, yeah. the rhino horn, as they say, um, on the face. Well, yeah, like I mean, they obviously like they're all males, so they really like differentiate in colour, don't they? Because like this one's really green and that one's really brown. Like. Yeah, that's the green one's like the natural form. Um, he colours up really nicely, um, and then this one's like a a gold stripe form that a breeder produced. Oh, cool! But I I prefer the the natural form. I yeah, think. generally most know. naturals like it's kind of <laughs> a debate with all kind of common like rurals, uh leos stuff like that whether we should. But I mean, a little bit of light selective breeding generally is all right, I guess. So here we have a pair of helmed basilisks. They are pretty cool actually. We got. The male here, the female here. Obviously, the male's got like a much nicer colour and he's slightly larger. It's obviously his crest is much larger as well. Um, so you were saying like that they're a Central American the, yeah, they're species. Yeah, they're a Central American species. Uh, um, they live in trees. They also feed on uh, insects and other invertebrates, but much larger invertebrate species than you'd expect. They can eat. They can eat. Yeah, you know, I guess they bugs. got a very big mouth, don't they? Yeah, they can. Eat, they can overpower and eat bugs as, as long as their body really. Yeah, so we, we were discussing <laughs> earlier. Obviously, you guys have probably seen uh, brown basilisk, green basilisk running on water. Um, even though these they're not in the same genera, but they are in the same family. Uh, we don't actually know if they can run on water. If anyone knows, that'd be interesting to find out. Because um, you do have a few other like different species of basilisk which aren't really renowned as well for or at least videoed running on water. It's been really cool because I've seen uh, to know because I've seen brown basilisks when I was in Mexico running in water, so they are pretty cool. Okay, so now we move on to the amphibians. Um, the bits I I don't know I don't feature too many amphibians, but actually these species are a, a top of mine. Uh, Red-eyed tree frogs, everyone knows them. One of the most popular amphibians there are in the world, uh, and it they kind of it's self-explanatory why they look amazing. Uh, you've got some really nice ones here, Tim. Like. Uh, Lovely and green, like you can see this one here. Uh, just there. We'll get one out in a bit to have a look at them awake. And I think the male was under here, wasn't it? Oh. There you go. So he's a bit smaller, but still really cool. Um, 
yeah, these, these guys, I, I saw one in Mexico when I was out there, but uh, surprisingly I didn't see them anymore, but I really love them as a species, I'll definitely keep them in the, par in the past and the future. So, um, uh, you've got a really nice planted setup here, and, like, and vegans in general do really well in planted setups, which is really cool. Uh, well, firstly, they look amazing, secondly, they keep humidity up. But yeah, these guys come from um, Central America, um, from Mexico all the way down to, I don't know, they probably, do they, pro they probably hit into South America, don't they? Mm. Yeah, a very wide distribution uh, species. Um, so you can see them pretty much anywhere in Central America and beyond. Uh, really nice. I'm a big fan of these guys. Again, they are insectivorous. Uh, as actually, all of your species are here. So now we come on to the uh, adults of the mountain horn dragons. And obviously, the the small guys still have quite a bit of ground to do. But uh, these are pretty nice. Well, the snouts and vents from twenty centimeters, yeah, like uh, five inches or so. Yeah, yeah and you've got tail longer than that so they're, they're pretty cool lizards actually you can be able to see the, the spines on that back um so uh, yeah obviously very similar to the hatchlings obviously just much bigger here we have the female who you believe is gravid again maybe so, yeah, early stages yeah yeah um and in shed as well so she looks a bit ratty <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got the male on the log here uh, they're just gonna kind of a standard tool setup with like Good heating, lighting, standard of garment stuff. But they're definitely, obviously, very arboreal, sticking to the, the logs. Uh, like how, how big are food items do these guys take? Like? They're just like, yeah, they'll eat pretty much anything. Adult crickets, adult roaches, adult locusts. Big, they love uh, earthworms as well. And well, pretty sedentary, like like the helmeted basilisks. But they'll, they'll just, they sort of sit and wait predators. So when they see something move in there, sort of, they get excited. And yeah, I mean, that's a good way to hunt in the jungle, isn't it? Uh, so, wait, well, where were they? Asia, they were mm, from, yeah. These are, yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, sorry, yeah. So here we have another amphibian, uh, very similar to the uh, red-eyed tree frogs, but uh, are a whole lot more level of endangered. These guys are critically endangered. They are lima leaf frogs. Now, they love to hide under these leaves. Sleep, if you can see that one there. And uh, how many do you have in here? Is it There's five in there. Yeah. So we've got five males in here. Uh, oh. Now that you can see, they kind of vary in different colours and patterns of spottedness. Uh, this, that one's very bright. Uh, let's have to see if we can see any more. I think there might be one under here. Yes. There we go. These guys are cool. I don't know. <laughs> um, I don't know as much about these guys as like. The red eyes, so tell me a bit more of like what, the, what's the distribution yeah, the, of that. They're, um, where the, the red eyes will occur in sort of lowland rainforests, whereas these are a, a cloud forest species. Um, there's a was a cost uh, like a Costa Rican population and a Panamanian population, and these are from the Costa Rican population. Um, they're doing some really good work out at the Costa Rican Amphibian Research Center. Um, as a captive breeding and reintroduction program with this species um, that's going really well. Um, that's affiliated with uh, Manchester Museum, they're doing some really good captive breeding work there um, and so you can go onto their website uh, to find out more about this species. Um, they're uh, they kept at cool temperatures, very humid um, and they're the same, they, they eat inverts as well, just like small crickets, small roaches um, some flies and moths and stuff, and they love it. They're really easy to keep, actually. But um, as I say, they're they're very rare and uh, shouldn't be just a, a a species that anyone goes out to to get, even though they are really cool <laughs> and rewarding. But yeah. So these guys uh, are also in a very nice kind of well planted life setup. Uh, well, not as many features, but it, like these guys really love to stick under the leaves, so it doesn't matter as much. Uh, they're obviously enjoying their setup here with the water dish and stuff, so they can soak. And uh, as you said, humidity is kept high. Uh, these guys also stay quite a bit smaller than the red eyes, which is uh, come back on. Look, we've got some more of the. Uh, I, know, I know you question more, geez, uh, of the same clutch of the mountain horn lizards. So uh, they're pretty cool. Uh, 
here we go. He also like has to breed his own stuff. He's got to incubate his own stuff. And uh, this is one extra on a second clutch you had of the mountain horn lizards, isn't it? That's what you're saying. Yeah, it's uh, just the one lonesome egg now. Um, I got another big clutch, but the much lower quality. So I've unfortunately lost all of them except this one. But this one seems to be fine. So. So here's the other incubator, as promised. Uh, what herb nursery too. Um, so these are the. Uh, Eggs from the helmeted bed bastards, and you've got seven. So yeah, um, there's seven in there. Yeah, yeah uh, two tubs. You're saying these would be the first spread in the UK? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, so there's a couple of well, there's one other person that has um has had some eggs before off a female. You didn't breed her though. She came and grabbed it. Um, yeah. And then they laid, but they they never hatched. They sort of they were fully formed. Oh, okay. They died on on hatching, which is unfortunate. But yeah, 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 these have been bred by me. So, so I just like to say thank you uh, for Tim for showing me around or his collection here in Bangor. It's uh, very different compared to most people's. Uh, so yeah, um, thank you very much again. Uh, That's it's right. really That's right. been really insightful <laughs> into some new wonderful species, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, so don't forget to comment, subscribe. I hope to be doing some more. Uh, like reptile room tours of some of my other mates uh, in round Bangor and also maybe further around the UK uh, so you can get an insight of the wider community of reptile uh, keeping so yeah, I'll see you on my next video Bye! <gasps>